Most people look at this landscape and they see an absence of life. Where I see generational possibilities. These fields were set afire many times long before man ever stood and watched. With each fire came new life and new possibilities. The wind will be utilized for fuel and the sandy beaches create our boundaries. What looks like destruction today will bring new life tomorrow. After we light the head fire and it clears out on this backside, we might have to go back in there and, and light a few more of those islands. Just light them back up. You can just light them from the head side and just run it. So ranch management isn't just about culling deer or hunting mature animals. It's about conservation and creating healthy habitats. We're trying to ensure that we have the right environment to produce healthy herds. So these controlled burns, they're a really big part of our conservation efforts. We're doing this based on trying to get the get it ready and prep for quail. So having this burn will pull some of the cattle off of the uh, out, of, out from the oaks in the other pasture. They'll get in here, start grazing. They'll start walking around. You know, with every step, they're they're just giving the ground disturbance, right? So with that ground disturbance, we'll start developing weeds and and forbs and different things for not only benefit the quail, but it'll benefit Neil guy, it'll benefit the deer, you know, just kind of chain reaction. I think if we did an island, skipped an island, did an island, that way it'd give you some sort of leeway so you can stalk in on some of the Neil guy after when they're, you know, they're gonna come in here and eat everything. All this nice tender grass that's gonna be growing up. It's these year round efforts that allow us to chase these trophy Neil guy and deer. Well, Bidden, you excited about it? Yeah, I'm pumped, man. Should be good. It's not often you do something totally new for the first time. Yeah, so, so tell me, how much uh, experience do you have um, shooting a rifle or hunting in general? Um, I've definitely never hunted, never killed anything other okay. than a bird with a BB gun okay. when I was a kid. My name is Ben Tenensko, and I'm from Boulder, Colorado. It's only really been within the last couple of years that I thought hunting might be something I was interested in pursuing. I was always more of a skater, snowboarder, surfer kind of guy. I think that people have become really disconnected from their food sources these days. And if there's an opportunity for me to have a much more direct connection with my food sources, I think that's a worthwhile pursuit. So if you want to take a seat, get your, your weapon ready. So we have 25, we have 100, and we have a 200 uh, yard range. Okay. We're going to concentrate on the 100 yard range. I've been working with this film crew for more than a decade as a cinematographer. An opportunity came up for me to come down here to South Texas and film a hunting project, but there was also an opportunity for me to get behind the gun instead of the camera and go for a hunt. I didn't know if I had what it took to take an animal's life. I really wasn't sure how I would feel about that. It's really cool to get an opportunity out here to give it a shot. When you're ready, just take your Put your safety forward and go ahead and squeeze off around. 
Well, why don't we go down there and take a look? Okay. So, Ben, what what makes you uh, interested or wanting to get into hunting? Um, I've always sort of been interested in it and thought it might be something I wanted to do eventually. And living in Colorado, there's just a ton of great opportunities. And I just recently found out that I actually love venison and elk and wild game. So, so you've eaten it before then? Yeah, I had only ever had it prepared like really bad oh. as a kid and thought I didn't like it. Okay. And then last year had some and thought it was amazing. So coming into this opportunity, I had never even heard of a Neil guy. I had to Google it, check it out, did some research, saw that it's some of the best tasting game meat that's out there apparently. I really don't feel worthy at this point, but it's pretty awesome to be able to go after such a special animal for my first hunt. When I'm on fire and I'm ready, I wrap my finger and make it let a decent amount of contact. Okay. And then let the crosshairs get zeroed. I have enough of that trigger in my finger so that when I squeeze my hand, it's kind of squeezing the shot off, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So after getting the rifle all sighted in, Flip was awesome about describing the shot placement to me. So we've got, got all that dialed in and then headed out for, our, for the spot and stalk. So what's the plan for where you think we're gonna find some Neil guy? <clears throat> so we're gonna check in the, uh, in this kind of open pasture. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try and find him out feeding. We're gonna climb up to a vantage point somewhere and we'll glass, you know? And from there, um, we spotted an old guy, we'll, we'll make a plan, we'll try and make sure that the wind is always in our favor, always in our face. So right now we're driving down to the other side, we're gonna basically just turn back and cut across. So we're either gonna have a crosswind or a wind directly in our face. I really had no idea what to expect in terms of what the landscape and geography was gonna be like. I was completely blown away. It was a landscape I'd never seen before. It felt like we were out on the beach, with looked like islands out there and a mirage. And it was just super cool to go on my first hunt that was also in a landscape that I'd never been in before. See this, these yuccas right here? Yeah. And you see those two that are right out in the, past the water? Yeah. So look right in between them, go straight up all the way to the end. Okay. And you'll see right on that, on that brush line, there's three bulls. As we were driving out there, we were spooking them left and right. So eventually we just parked, ended up walking a few miles, creeping up little sand dunes, looking over them, trying to spot some. And eventually we found a really good group of four that looked like they were worth pursuing. So there's a little burn patch just on the other side of these hills. Okay. We're gonna go around these sand dunes, and get on the backside and keep that Keep the wind in our face and make our way down. All right. Let's go. The winds were kind of all over the place while we were out there. So we would see a group that we thought were good. Then the winds would shift, check the maps, and then take completely different routes to move around and come in from a better direction. Getting tired yet? No, I'm, I'm kind of glad we're having to work for it a little bit. Yeah, it's not too much. Not as exciting if you uh, get off and shoot in your first try. Yeah. So after, after a couple hours and moving in on them from a few miles, we finally found a really good group that, was, that were bedded down under a yucca. You could pretty much just see the tops of their backs there. So these two bulls are grazing a little bit. They're working their way down the other side of the hill. So as soon as they go over that back side of the hill, we can sneak in and close that distance dramatically. We should be able to get within 100 yards. Cool. And one of them looks like it's worth shooting? Yeah, so one of them's a juvenile for sure. The second bull looks pretty good, but he's laying down, so we want to make sure we stand up. Okay. 
Okay. Make sure he's fully mature. So we'll just give it about five, 10 minutes, see what they're doing, we'll check again. I was pretty surprised how much our game plan kept changing. I was feeling kind of rushed, like we needed to get in on them quickly. But our guide Flip was awesome about knowing to wait. At one point they saw us, we needed them to forget about us. At one point we even needed to lie down because they were coming around a corner. And it was just a, a much more exciting and technical hunt than I was expecting. If they go to this island, we're gonna get a shot. Okay. But you're looking at the second to the last bull. Second to the last bull. Yeah. Okay. At one point, they started moving right towards us. Flip peeked over the edge of the dune and told us all to hit the deck and just lay low and not move at all while they passed us by, hopefully. After that, we got lucky. They moved right behind this island, and that's when things got pretty exciting. As soon as they cleared the island, Flip told us, run. Just run across this sand flat over to this other den. Just run it. We gotta move. So we run across the sand flats, we get over to the next to that dune. I knew things were about to happen. My heart's racing. Flip goes up, he peeks over, he gets the shooting sticks ready. I'm getting excited, nervous. Tells me to put my gun on it, get my earplugs in, and I knew things were about to happen right then. Should I take so, the safety off? Yeah, you can take the safety off. Don't put your finger on the trigger yet. They don't know we're here, so just stay calm, relax, take a deep breath. You're 130 yards. Take a deep breath, take your time. Take a shot? What was it? Did what? you say take a shot? No, not yet, not yet. It was really hard to hear him with the earplugs in. I was really excited, so I kept being like, did you say shoot, don't shoot? But then I heard him describe just right there between his neck and his shoulder blade, there's a crease, just put one right in there. That front shoulder, if you put it right there between the crease of his neck and that front shoulder. Should I shoot? If you're ready, you squeeze yeah. the trigger, take your time. Tried to steady my breath as much as possible. I feel it right there. And just lit, lit one rip. Stand up. Watch across that flat. Hold on, watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him. Stay right here. Come here, come here. Hold on. Hold on, wait right here. Come here. He's down. Let him let him rest. That's a good shot. Good shot. Congratulations. Fuck yeah. I feel super grateful that it all worked out so well. I feel like it was a huge case of beginner's luck and I got really lucky having it all work out so perfectly. And I know it's not always gonna go like that, but the fact that it did work out so well for my first hunting trip ever makes me really excited to move forward and keep pursuing this.
One of the first things I started thinking about was how much delicious meat I was gonna have in the freezer. So my, my mom's coming to visit me next week. It's her birthday and I'm hoping to feed her some delicious Nilgai tenderloin. She usually demands it pretty well done, but I'm hoping she'll make an exception to taste this, this nice meat I harvested for her. So now that we had a super successful Nilgai hunt, we've got a group of hog hunters coming in for the next week and I'll be back behind the camera and learning about wild hog hunting at nighttime.